Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a magical problem for you all today. This problem was shown to me by a viewer of my channel, Ram Swarup Mohanty, and it's from the 2016 India National Math Olympiad. So thanks for showing this to me, Ram. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna show you two different solutions, uh, my solution and Ram's solution. Uh, so we have an isosceles triangle ABC with AB equal to AC, and the orthocenter lies on the incircle, and we wanna find AB over BC. So a fairly simple problem statement, but it still takes a few steps to solve it. Um, so first I'm gonna point out a certain symmetry um, so d point D in the figure, it's both the midpoint of BC, uh, the foot of the altitude from A, and the point of tangency of the incircle. Uh, that's pretty clear to see since AB is equal to AC. So I'm just going to start by noting that. All right, and then I denoted a couple other points in the figure too. Uh, the in-center I, which uh, clearly lies on AD, um, the orthocenter H, and then the other points of tangency and the other feet of the altitude. All right, so my solution uh, starts by using power of a point twice. Uh, so first I'm gonna note that aj squared is equal to ah times ad um, by power of a point. Um, so that's one way that I use that. The orthocenter lies on the end circle. And now I'm gonna use a fact about triangles. So in general, uh, even in a non-isosceles triangle, it's true that AH times AD is equal to BD times DC. Uh, and I'm going to prove that um, also using power of a point. But first, I'm going to note one thing. So in any triangle, the reflection of the orthocenter over a side lies on the circumcircle. So if I reflect H over BC, uh, it should lie on the circumcircle of triangle ABC. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw in the circumcircle and, and uh, the reflection of H over BC lies on it. So that's H prime here. Um, and it's clear by symmetry that these points are all collinear. So A, H, I, D, and H prime. And so now if we use power of a point, uh, we have uh, so BD squared is obviously equal to BD times DC um, because uh, by symmetry, BD is equal to DC. And then by power of a point, that's equal to AD times DH prime. And DH prime is equal to HD because I said H prime was defined to be the reflection of H over BC. And so this is equal to AD times HD. Okay, so we have BD squared is equal to AD times HD. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two equations by adding them. So when I do that, uh, I'm going to add the right side of this equation with the left side of this equation. So AJ squared plus BD squared. That's equal to AH times AD plus AD times HD. And then we can factor out the AD. Um, so this is AD times AH plus HD. And that's just AD squared. So we have AJ squared plus BD squared is equal to AD squared. And now I'm going to take advantage of the Pythagorean theorem because it looks like this equation, it looks like if we combine it with the Pythagorean theorem on triangle ABD, it looks like that might give us something useful. So AD squared, that's AB squared minus BD squared using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so we have AJ squared plus BD squared is equal to AB squared minus BD squared. So I'm gonna, um, if you set those two equal to each other, um, that's equivalent to saying that AB squared minus AJ squared is two BD squared. And BD is equal to BJ because they're both tangents to the inner circle. So we have AB squared minus AJ squared is 2BJ squared. All right. And now we have a difference of squares here. So I'm going to take advantage of that fact. So this is AB minus AJ times AB plus AJ. And AB minus AJ is just BJ. 
And if we take AB plus AJ, uh, well, AB is AJ plus BJ. So we can take this and rewrite it as BJ plus 2AJ. And that has to equal the 2BJ squared from above. And then if you simplify that, so you can cancel the BJs, and then uh, with a little more simplification, you just get BJ is equal to 2AJ. All right, so BJ is equal to 2AJ. And now I claim we have enough information to help solve the problem. So AB and BC, I claim those can both be written in terms of BJ and AJ. And so this should help us finish it off. Um, so we have AB over BC. Well, BC is 2BD uh, by symmetry. And BD is the same as BJ because they're both tangents to the inner circle. And AB is AJ plus BJ. Uh, and now BJ is 2AJ from the above. And we can also substitute BJ in the denominator. So 2BJ is 4AJ. And then if we simplify, we get 3 fourths as the final answer. All right, so this is my solution. I feel like I got a little bit lucky um, how just sort of adding these equations got everything to work out. Um, so a little luck, um, but I feel like Rom's solution, which I'm going to show you next, is maybe a little more motivated. All right, so I'm going to clear up uh, some of the diagram. And uh, this same fact I'm going to use in Rom's proof. Um, it's, it's obvious um, D is, is all three of these things. All right, and now I'm going to note that um, IJ is perpendicular to AB. That's because um, AB is tangent to the end circle. So since IJ is perpendicular to AB, it has to be parallel to HF um, because HF is also perpendicular to AB. And now I'm going to try to use Menelaus's theorem on the, on the figure. All right. So by Menelaus, uh, we have CD over CB times BF over FA times AH over HD is equal to 1. That's because if you have triangle ABD, uh, you can take uh, FC as a transversal, and then applying Menelaus, you get this fact. And it's clear by symmetry that CD over CB is a half. So first, I'm just going to note that. Now, what about BF over FA? Um, well, we're trying to, we don't know that yet, but I'm going to show, I'm going to try to calculate AH over HD. Um, so it's clear that HD passes through the end center. So AH over HD is really AH over 2HI. Okay. So we have AH over HD is AH over 2HI. But AH over HI is equal to AF over FJ. Uh, that's because, uh, like I said before, IJ is parallel to HF. So using uh, ratios... It has to be true that AH over HI is AF over FJ. All right. And so where do we go from there? Uh, well, I'm going to show you um, the next step. So we can take this uh, ratio AF over FJ, AF over 2FJ, and substitute it in. And uh, we can also substitute in a half uh, for CB over CD over CB. And with some simplification, we just get BF is equal to 4FJ. Um, so here the problem kind of starts to collapse a little bit. Uh, if BF is 4FJ, then it's clear that BJ has to be 3FJ just by subtracting those two. So, so BJ is 3FJ. And BJ is also equal to BD. And BD is equal to DC. Um, so from here, what I'm going to do is, uh, start, uh, I'm going to note one thing. So angle AF, so b before I uh, get too much into the details, here's my strategy to finish off the problem. So we want to find AB over BC. 
Now, by power of a point, um, we can end up showing that BF times BA is equal to BD times BC. So I'm going to explain this a little bit. Uh, so angle AFC is 90 degrees, and angle ADC is also 90 degrees. So AFDC is cyclic. All right, and so that's what allows us to apply power of a point so that we get BF times BA is equal to BD times BC. And then if we sort of cross multiply here, or cross divide, I should say, um, then AB over BC is equal to BD over BF. So this is the part where I simplified Rom's original proof, uh, which used a little more calculation. So AB over BC is equal to BD over BF. And BD, uh, we set up here, was equal to 3FJ. And BF from here is equal to 4FJ. And so if you substitute those two, you get 3FJ over 4FJ, which is 3 fourths. So I think it's really cool how different our approaches were, um, both my solution and Rom's solution. And if you go on the Art of Problem Solving forum, uh, you'll see a lot of other solutions. Uh, many of them use trigonometry, but some of them didn't. Um, so I, I think it's very cool that a, a problem like this can have so many approaches. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.